In the PC gaming community, pre-built gaming systems have a pretty bad reputation. Not Rise of the Skywalker bad, but pretty terrible. In fact, if you're spending $1,000 on a pre-built gaming system from Amazon, chances are it's gonna be pretty rubbish value for money. But how about a $390 system? To find the cheapest gaming branded pre-built on Amazon is actually not that easy to do. Because if you type in gaming PC and sort from cheapest to most expensive, a lot of these systems are like renewed Optiplex systems and those aren't really geared towards gamers. Now, you could buy one of those and turn it into a gaming capable system quite easily, but that's a topic for a different video. So this is the little beast that I ended up going with. Straight off the bat, the specs don't really make any sense. How can this be a 10 core gaming system? Now I did a video on this specific listing before and I figured it out in that video. Because they have an AMD APU in this PC that has a four core CPU section and a six core GPU section, they added those two together to say that it's a 10 core gaming PC. By that logic, my main computer has 3000 something cores in it. And if I refer to my PC on the internet as a 3000 core gaming system, people would get pretty mean. So after using your help to decide on this peasant edition pre-built system, I decided to order it and this is what happened. And here we have it, it's actually um, a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but you don't need that much space to house a 10 core gaming beast. <laughs> I do actually have a different concern with it. There aren't any fragile stickers anywhere on it. And when I put it down, there was a very clear gadunk sound that came from the inside of the box. It sounded a little bit like a loose side panel. Um, yeah, so I'm a bit concerned about this thing. But with that, let's open it up and see whether or not DHL killed our little gaming beast. as we get into the 10 core gaming beast box. Oh, oh, there's actually another, there's actually another box in here. Oh yeah, that, oh, that's not ideal, but there she is, what a beaut. That's some of the most fragile packing foam. Look at that, it just kind of, disintegrates like that. So I think the sound we heard was the power cable and not actually a side panel because everything seems to be secured tightly. So this is it. Amazing looking PC. It looks like it came straight out of 2007. Uh, there's a DVD drive for some reason and space for two more if you really want to go to town ripping them sick MP3s for all of your friends. There's some front airflow, which is very good for the 10 core beast that lives inside of here. Uh, in all honesty, the front IO doesn't look too bad. At least you have USB 3. It comes with a little Wi-Fi dongle in one of the USB 2 ports. And then it has the biggest power button I've ever seen on a PC. Can't miss that, even if you tried. On the side, we've got some more ventilation. There's no fan here, but you can see a bit of cables through there. And here we have the rear IO, which is not the worst looking. I mean, we've got four USB 3 ports here and an HDMI port, but the VGA port worries me a bit, considering that rumor has it, this was actually the display output of choice during the Triassic period. But with that, let's open it up and see what the inside of this little beast looks like. Oh. Uh, the thumb screws aren't captive, so I guess Dimitri from Hardware Canucks would mark them down for that. Okay, here we have it. That's some pretty terrible looking cable management. They didn't use the back of the motherboard tray to actually route the cables and stuff. Uh, I... Okay, so there isn't actually space at the top here for the CPU power cable, but this stuff they could have routed behind the back. Uh, we've got a hard drive in here that's... Um, I mean, that's just loose in there. They just put one of these in there and then just kind of like pushed it in there. That's, that's, that's pretty terrible. In regards to the hard drive, I don't really recognize it. Although it does look pretty used. I mean, there are quite a few scuffs on it. 
The biggest problem that I have with the component selection of this system is actually the power supply, which is a 400 watt unit that I've never seen before. But it does look like the kind of thing that could trigger a chain reaction that ends up destroying all of the electronics in your house. Oh, well, I mean, it's nice to see that they used some zip ties to actually help with the cable management. The motherboard is an ASRock A320M HDV. Uh, it's an AM4 motherboard, so you could technically upgrade the CPU later down the line. Although the VRM is fairly loser looking, so I wouldn't want to run something like a 10 core Ryzen CPU in here. Oh wait. So with that, let's put the side panel back on and see whether or not this system fires up. I'll have a closer look at all of the components later. I'll disassemble it and try and fix up the cable management and stuff like that. Um, but I don't want to do that before I see if it works because I may inadvertently fix something that they didn't quite plug in. Oh yeah, I just need to remember to put the cable tie back because that's, that's a very important part of the operation of this system. And it's the moment of truth. Let's see if it fires up. Oh, it's got a nice red power button there. We got a little bit of red glow here. It seems like it's working. Okay, Windows, Windows thing is happening. It's very slow. This is potentially the first time it's booting. Uh, so that may be a lot to do with it. But I think, I think that three terabyte drive that they included that looks like it came from the bottom of an Afghan well um, may be the culprit here. Oh yeah, there we go. They've actually got it set up. They have Google Chrome installed straight off the bat for you, so that's very nice. I appreciate that. While it's official, according to Windows, this is a 10 compute core CPU. <laughs> so, you know, they, they weren't lying, you know. In Windows, it does tell you it's it's a 10 core CPU. So I think if you if you kind of confront them about that, they're, they're just gonna point to this and tell you, well, it is a 10 core CPU. The fact that the system works straight out of the box without me having to open it up and dig around in that terrible cable management to fix anything is a pretty good start. Although giving it points for that kind of feels like giving it points for not blowing up and taking both of my hands with it. It's, it, it's kind of a minimum requirement. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and run CSGO on it because they didn't seem to install any drivers on the system. So I wanna see how much of an impact that has on the actual performance. And then we're gonna try and run some other popular games on the little engine that could. Those results are pretty terrible. This thing is a real little crap box. Even for $380, those results are unacceptable. And it's not like I'm playing brand new AAA titles either. Things like CSGO with the lowest settings and Dota are barely playable on this system. And that really isn't something I'd expect from a gaming system. Now, just out of curiosity, I tried to run Half-Life 2 on this system, which is a 16 year old game. And this system, couldn't get a consistent 60 frames per second at 1080p on a 16 year old game. That's some pretty crazy stuff. Now just to really put the gaming experience on this system into perspective, here is some footage of me playing PUBG on the lowest settings at 720p. Just to give you a real indication of what 14 frames per second looks like at 720p. So remember I said that the hard drive looked a little bit used? Well, I decided to do some performance tests on the hard drive and it performs kind of in line with other hard drives. You know, it's, it's decent. But when I looked at Crystal Disk Info, it shows that this hard drive is very, very used. In fact, it's been on for at least four years. Whoa, that's not good. So with that, let's open it up and see if we can fix up the cable management in there. Ah, 
And here it is. This is after about maybe 20 minutes of cable management. It looks significantly better in my opinion, but it still does have some problems. Uh, in all fairness to the guy that built this system, this is the worst case I've ever worked in. I would rather eat one of my own fingers than have to build in this case again. It really was terrible. And the power supply doesn't help at all. Like this cable could go behind the back, but it just isn't long enough. Like it, it's so close. There are a couple millimeters in it, but it just doesn't fit. So you have to run it around the front. All the cables are obviously horrible ketchup and mustard, even from the case front IO. Like it's very difficult to hide all of that disgustingness. Down here, I can't get the, the, the hard drive in properly because the actual cage is broken. As you can see here, if it's, if it's not broken, the hard drive sits there, it sits there fine, uh, but because it's broken, that happens. So the biggest problem here, and one of the reasons that I wanted to actually rebuild the system, was because it illustrates the point that, okay, yes, the guy who built the system could have done a better job. Um, as, I, as I illustrated here. But the biggest problem with this system is the choice of components, even for a $380 build. This case shouldn't exist. They shouldn't have used this power supply, and it's unacceptable that the hard drive is older than I am and has worked harder than the most abused donkey. Not only that, but the 10 core APU that they use in the system wasn't an acceptable gaming solution when it was first available four years ago. So if it's not already very clear, you really shouldn't buy this system. It's kind of like the PC equivalent of gonorrhea. It's just a red and yellow mess. So in conclusion, in my opinion, if you have under $500 to spend on a system, you really shouldn't buy a pre-built PC because in that price range, there isn't enough of a margin for profit to make it worth the system builder's while without cutting some serious donkey level corners. So if you like this video, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna do a follow-up where I build my own $380 system and I'll walk you through the process of how to build that system so that you don't have to fall for this kind of crap just because you don't know how to build a system. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Follow me on whatever social media you want. I'll have it linked in the description below and until the next video, bye-bye.